crude oil, the recovery of the remnants of microorganisms from millions of years ago has given birth to the petroleum industry as we know it today. It's also been the birthplace of plastics and even some medicines. Today I want to take a look at an introduction to organic chemistry. Now the original definition of organic chemistry stems from the chemicals that were made only by living things. It was believed somehow there was some mystical power in living things that allowed them and only them to make certain chemicals. In 1828, Frederick Roller proved that wrong when he was able to make from inorganic material, lifeless manner, essentially the chemical urea, a chemical of life. So that definition had to be modified and it now includes the study of carbon and its related compounds. But we usually don't include things like carbonates and bicarbonates, carbon dioxide in the study. But why carbon? Well, first of all, carbon is tetravalent, meaning it can bond with four other things. It has an extremely high bonding capacity. And not only does it have a high bonding capacity, it has the ability to bond with itself in rings and chains and even branch changed in a property called catenation. I want to take briefly a look at how we depict or draw some of these organic chemicals. So here we have a 3D model of an organic chemical. The first thing I want to do is try to flatten that out and represent it in two dimensions. So here I have an example of what's called its structural formula. I've replaced the bonds with dash lines and double bonds with two dash lines. And it gives me a spatial arrangement of the molecule. Unfortunately though, the trade-off is I lose the true 3D nature of the molecule. Most of the time we try to draw these bonds with angles of 90 degrees, 180, or even 120. This can then be expressed in what's called a condensed formula. And the purpose of a condensed formula is to remove the bonds and therefore allow it to take up less space. Every carbon has followed by it what's attached to it. So for instance, the second carbon in this particular molecule has attached to it a hydrogen and a CH3 group. This formula can be reduced further to a molecular formula, C5H10O. But there's considerable loss moving from this formula to the molecular formula because we lose the concept of who is bonded to who. And in some cases, this can be reduced further to what's called the empirical formula, which expresses the elements in their lowest ratio. Let's take a look at another one. I'll begin by converting this to a molecular formula by counting the carbons and the hydrogens and oxygens. And now this can be reduced further to lowest terms by dividing each by two, C2H3O. Now let's take this and turn it into a full structural formula. Here's my first attempt at drawing it. Now you'll notice a few problems. First of all, the first two carbons have too many hydrogens attached to them as dictated by the condensed formula. And lastly, the final carbon has only two bonds. So I'm gonna to have to modify this structure and by removing the two hydrogens and inserting a double bond, I can do that. And also if I change the arrangement at the end of the molecule to what follows below, I also meet the criteria of carbon needing four bonds. Organic chemicals can be put together in series or families, and this is called the alkane family. What I've shown here in the alkanes is a series of them, one following the other, and you'll notice that they differ by just a CH2 unit or methylene unit. This is what we define sometimes as a homologous series. They also have a common general formula. I'll start by writing down their individual molecular formulas. A general formula means if I have n number of carbons, you should be able to predict how many hydrogens it has. So in this case, if I use the general formula CN, you'll notice the number of hydrogens is twice that plus two, and hence my general formula. All of these alkanes have similar properties in that they all burn very, very well. And they can also all go undergo what's called substitution reactions, which we'll look at later on. Now their physical properties vary in a systematic and predictable fashion. So here I'll take a look at what there is their boiling points. And you can see here a gradual change as the number of carbons increases. Let's take a look at why that is. I've drawn here an example of C3H8, the molecule propane. At any point in time, more of the electrons may exist at the top of the molecule than the bottom. That creates what we call a temporary dipole. That will then induce or cause a temporary dipole in a molecule that happens to be nearby. 
Notice now I have a slightly positive facing towards a slightly negative. This creates what we call the London dispersion force. And you might recall from the unit on bonding that the larger a molecule is, the greater the strength of the London dispersion force. And that corresponds to what we see in the graph here at the right. Homologous series can be modified. So if I take my original alkane family and I remove the H from the end and in place put an OH, I created another homologous series, but it has a different general formula. This presence of the OH group is what we call the alcohol family. And my general formula now is slightly modified. This OH group is what we call a functional group. It's the reactive part of a molecule. And there's several of them you'll become familiar with. And I put a few examples down below. First of all, a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen at the end of a chain will recognize as the aldehyde family. The carboxylic acids look somewhat similar but the addition of that OH group. Carboxylic acids form a group of what we call weak acids, and we came across those in the acid base unit, ethanoic or acetic acid being one of them. This family over here is recognized by the presence of nitrogen, the amine family. Amines tend to make weak bases. Some molecules can contain more than one functional group. Here I have an example of an amino acid containing both carboxylic acids and amine groups. There'll be a subsequent program where we'll look more at each of these families individually. So this has just served as an introduction to this unit. There's lots to follow. And again, if you find this useful, please add a comment.